Football guys talking basketball. FGTB. Nice win for Oklahoma against BYU. Said 82 to 66. That was a heck of a bounce back, man. Had to have it. You know, it's it's interesting, you know, just watching the the Kansas State Kansas game on Monday night just it it gave some perspective to me as I was watching it about I I know there's been some panic with the hoops team we went into K-State and beat that team by 20 same same team same crowd and Kansas comes to town and K-State beats them it just everything is so close in this conference I you feel like at times you're terrible and you're a million miles away. And then, you know, the next night you get a nice win over a top 25 team. It's, it's a reminder that I, I think we're maybe much better than we feel like at times. So last night was definitely something they needed. Shot the ball. Well, hit some threes. Um, you got what you needed out of, uh, We'll call him. It's been a while since he put together a really nice scoring night. And uh, it was one of the more efficient games that he's had recently. You got good play from, from several different guys. That was a, that was a much needed effort. No doubt about it. And I was, I think the thing that I was most impressed with was just how they finished the game. Last 10 minutes of the second half. I mean, that was a back and forth game up to that point. And I mean, it was a tie tie game at half. The defense, it felt like the defense really went up a notch late. And in the moment where you're at home, maybe you start feeling the pressure with how close the game was. I, I thought that OU played its best basketball under that pressure. And that that was encouraging. They did a really nice job of contesting all the threes for BYU. BYU, they they can shoot. Man, but I, I thought that they also did a really nice job of not fouling. BYU didn't shoot a ton of free throws, so I thought the defense was really solid. And then it was really good to see Uzan play well. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I thought that he played at a really high level. He's so talented, and he's got to bring that type of energy and, and that level of play with the confidence he was playing with. He, he just got to play like that more often. What, 16-5-4? I don't think he turned it over at all was running the show looked really good uh, I thought he played one of his best games in quite in, in quite a while and then you mentioned McCollum life's good when you get to the free throw line and hit your free throws man yeah eight eight for eight from the line for him and uh, did a nice job I didn't shoot the three particularly well but I I thought now, I saw some people complaining about how many threes OU shot. A lot of them are good looks, man. You got you to shoot those shots in college basketball. That's all they practice. It's not all they practice, but they practice it a lot. When you're open from the three-point line, you got to take the shots. And I, I thought the, the confidence those guys were shooting them with, I, I love seeing it. Shoot all the threes, boys. I'm all for it. Right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I... You got to be able to hit wide open looks, you know, and in college hoops, it's such a different game than the NBA that it's rare that guys miss wide open looks in the NBA, but in college, it's like, that's the separation between good teams and bad teams. It's like, if you can hit the open looks, you're going to have a good team. If you can't, it's going to be tough. I, whenever you get down to it. So I, you got to fire away. Some of their best games that they've played this year is whenever they were hot from three. And you can't be hot from three if you don't fire away. I'm I'm with you. It, it's not like the half-court offense generates a bunch of really good looks and wide-open drives to the basket anyways. So if you're getting good wide-open looks at three, you got to take them. Yeah, and it's been a while since OU's beat a top 25 team. Mm-hmm. So that that is good for the old resume, and it had to feel good for those players, especially with the way that they finished the game, with how tight that game was. You know, to end up winning by by sixteen had to feel really good 
A uh, couple more thoughts on that game. Uh, number one, BYU probably didn't have a chance with the guitar and the hat and the solo cup sitting in Toby Keith's normal seat. I had a buddy, I had a buddy text me. It said, yeah, normally I emotionally hedge against OU in this situation, but I saw that guitar and max bet, max bet on the Sooners, <laughs> which was pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, that was cool. You knew something like that was coming. And, um, you know, I, I thought Porter Moser, the, the statement he put out was, was excellent about Toby Keith and how it made him feel like they were longtime friends, um, you know, right from the get go. Uh, but that was, that was cool. That was, that was one we needed to get in that moment. My favorite part was he said, I wish it was more than just water in this cup. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. But Traore, the guy from BYU, killed him. Killed a big game. Sooners didn't have answer for him. He's one of those guys, Ted. What's he look like in pads? Yeah. <laughs> What's he look like with the helmet on? I want to know. He's listed. I went and looked it up. He's listed at 6'6", 240. If that guy's 240, okay. No chance. Yeah. I mean, there's no yeah. that that dude is he's thick. And I I was really impressed with him. He's had a couple of really nice games for them this season. But come on, young man. The future is on the gridiron. Let's go. Let's get this guy in pads. What are we doing? Yeah, there's there's like a there has to be a, a moment where you feel like, okay, I'm good at this, but the standard of getting into the league is so difficult that, you know, maybe I could go show up, show some things in the NFL. I mean, there's been guys that don't have a lot of experience and show up and just kind of check the boxes on the, on the physical list, on the, on the uh, measurables. And he looks like he'd be one of those guys. He looks like one of those guys where he's working really, really hard to keep the weight down. Traori. I think that's how you say it. Traori. I'm here to tell you. Come. Come to the football side of things and let that weight go up. Just let it balloon a little bit. Maybe we see what the pass sets look like. I'm just saying. The athleticism's there. The footwork's there. there. Just need a little molding, a little ball of clay, turn yeah, it into an offensive tackle. Five or six miles a day on the basketball court, he may he may get up to two seventy five before you even know what happened. Just saying, I Actually, I always have my eye on those 75 guys. Seventy five every night and make his way down to two forty. <laughs> That's probably where he already is. <laughs> yeah, got to win Bedlam on Saturday night, man. Have to. In Norman, what Porter is one and four against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma During State is a downturn. Yeah. They they do not have a good basketball team this season. You have to win that game if you're Porter Moser. Absolutely have to win that game. No, no excuses. He knows it. That team knows it. You gotta get the win in that one. Oh yeah. I there's there's no excuses for that. I I mean, maybe there's a lot of pressure because of what the record has been because of how bad you need the win. You need to stockpile these while you have a chance because this last run schedule wise is not easy. And I mean, they're firmly in the tournament right now, but Houston, Kansas, Baylor, you've got really tough games coming up. And when you're at home against the last place team in the conference, I mean, what are we talking about? You got to win that. There's, there's no, there's no way to justify losing the game. And that's a, that's not a good spot to be in. I understand that, but it's just where we are. No doubt. And we'll, I, I would expect a, a really solid crowd for that one. Just with, you know, everything that's going on with the program. So I, I'm looking forward to watching that game, but got to win it. If you're Porter Moser and the Sooners. Okay, moving on to the Thunder. A bit of an unexpected thriller on Sunday night <laughs> with a tanking Toronto team. <laughs> All of a sudden, you looked up and the Thunder were down 23 to the tanking Raptors. Now, end up winning in double overtime. But 
went to Utah on Tuesday night and got beat uh, 117-124 and played well early. You know, really the first nearly three quarters, I thought that they looked really, really good, but the Thunder were rolling and then the Jazz dominated the last few minutes of the third quarter and it was just a back and forth battle in the fourth from that point on. And credit to the Utah Jazz, man. The the shot making in the NBA is insane. Because I was watching the OU game. It just that game had just ended, and you were watching this. It's like a different sport. It really it is. is. It is. These NBA guys, but the Jazz just hit so many big shots in the last couple of minutes. Uh, credit to Keontae George and Laurie Markinen. They hit somewhere. I just went, damn, okay. Credit to you. They're sometimes you play great defense. And these guys are just incredible at putting the ball in the basket. They are. And yeah, you forget it looks so easy at times that I mean I understand defensively people say they don't play defense in the NBA. Well, they do in clutch moments. They do you know, in the last couple minutes of quarters, last couple minutes of the half or of the of the game. And then obviously once you get into playoff basketball or it's really getting to, get to that, you know, qualifying for the playoffs and everything, that's whenever you start to see it. You forget sometimes that everyone on the floor is like 6'10 and above. And like, it's just, it's just crazy with, with, the the ball handling step back threes with someone's hand in your face is crazy so some of the let's go with frustrating things about this performance for the thunder you hit you know you shoot 51 percent from three you hit 19 threes and you lose that's not good I, I think that they continue to struggle with size. Markinen and John Collins just killed them. They got absolutely pounded on the boards, gave up 19 second chance points. I'll just be real. They got pushed around a little bit by the strength of some of the guys from the Jazz. But with that being said, there, there continue to be some positive things. And there are a couple things in this game I really liked. Good seeing Jalen Williams back on the court. Now, there were a couple of moments where he did not look completely back physically, but the way that his shooting has developed is just, I mean, it is fantastic. Pull-up jumpers, catch and shoot. He just, he's shooting the ball with so much confidence, and it feels like Chet Holmgren is too now. There was about a month ago, it looked like some hesitation had creeped in for him when it came to pulling the trigger on some of these threes, I I don't know if anyone tracks this, but I bet he led the league in pump fakes from the three-point line. <laughs> and actually, someone definitely tracks that. They track everything in the NBA yes, these days. They do. But I, I thought that, you know, he was looking hesitant for a while shooting the three, and it looks like that hesitation is gone. Went four for six in this one was four of 10 against Toronto was three of six against the Hornets. I think he was three of four the game before that he's found, I think he's found a rhythm and a confidence shooting the three, which you think about how that opens things up for them offensively. If he's going to shoot the three at a 40% clip, good luck keeping Shea Gilgis Alexander in front of you with all that space on the floor. Good no luck doubt. teams. I mean, there's just Shea's very good at basketball. This just, <laughs> Yeah, well, it's you're right. I mean, the I mean, just it goes back to shot making. If if you got both Jalen Williams and Chet and all those guys that continue to get better and better, and like you say, stretch the floor, it just it makes the most dangerous player that much more dangerous as everyone else brings their game up. So, you're good stuff rolling, man. I just my my one thing is. Because you mentioned the like the physicality and stuff, and I I just I wonder as it gets more physical in the playoffs, like if that's going to be a glaring weakness, you know, 
You you have to assume it's going to be. Yeah, that you don't really. I mean, it shows up from time to time in the regular season, but in the playoffs, it's probably going to be a night after night thing. I I I'm not worried about Shea Gilgis Alexander and, and the physicality. He's just no one can stay in front of the guy for the most part. I mean, there are very very few guys in the league that can guard him. the The thing that when you start thinking about the playoffs and what it could look like. The rebounding is definitely a concern, and that's that's the main reason you're seeing every NBA podcast, whether it's Bill Simmons, Ryan Rosillo, J.J. Redick, Zach Lowe, all of them are our buddies over at Down to Dunk. Everyone's tried to figure out what big guy the Thunder can bring in to help take some of that pressure off Chet, like what big physical body they can bring in and there's just not many, there's not many options. I mean, the Thunder have all the pick in the world, all the picks in the world, and we'll see if they make a move. Trade deadlines tomorrow. We'll see if they make a move. But I, if if all of those people that are really that are the most dialed in people when it comes to the NBA, if they can't figure out the trade, I don't know how we're supposed to be dead. We're just we're just a couple dumb football dudes. Yeah, I hey, I'll let them deal with that and you know, it wouldn't shock me if they just roll with what they got. And, you know, they've got so many assets whenever it comes to draft time. And I don't know. Their window right now looks like it's so long that maybe you don't feel like – I mean, there's times whenever it's like, hey, this is the year that we have to do it, right? The window's closing. It, it doesn't feel like that's the case for them. So I don't know that you necessarily bring someone in that maybe changes some of the chemistry that you got going at this moment. I mean, there's times to do that. I feel like they're just starting to open the window. I don't feel like it's starting to close. So I'm, I imagine that has some type of effect on how, how much pressure they feel there is to actually make a move like that. I completely agree. The only thing I will say is you have to imagine that Sam Presti looks at it and goes, we thought we had a big window. True. Back with Harden and Westbrook and Durant. And all it takes is a, is a weird drive to the basket or who knows what to, to totally change the window. So you're right. Patrick Beverly. If you got an if you got an opportunity, like if you feel like you got a legit shot, then like and I don't know what they feel. Like if they feel up there in that front office, like, hey, you know, we're scanning around, looking around the league. It's not out of the question. Like we go win a championship, then you without a doubt you make that move. If if there's one there though, I mean that's the thing is there has to be a move to make before you just go do something, right? You don't just do something to do it. The The right move has to be there. I trust Sam Presti to make the proper decision. And will I be disappointed if they don't make a move? I don't think so. Will I completely overreact and say that they're going to go win the title if they do make a move? <laughs> You're gosh dang right I will. So we'll we'll see uh, with the trade deadline looming, but it is, and I've said this a lot, it's just so much fun to be back in the mix, man. What with their the two seed after the loss last night, there's an absolute log jam in the top four of the West. It's just, it's so much fun to care this much again. I love it. I'm so it's happy. Good. I love stressing about NBA basketball again. It's great. I don't know uh, if it's good for my blood pressure, but I don't care. It's fun. Well, I'm in the mode where I don't stress about it until it's time to stress about it. If that makes sense. Um, I don't have, I don't have the patience or the ability to stress over it for such a long period of time. I need, I need to like a short ramp up stress period. And that's what I'll get when the playoffs start. Well, well, here's something that will cause you the proper amount of stress. The playoffs, with, with the way that the roster is constructed right now, the playoffs are going to come 
it's going to come down to whether Lou Dort and Josh Giddy can hit perimeter shots when they're not guarded. Yeah. I don't know if that stresses you out or not, but that's how it feels. Because if I was an NBA team, I would say, Giddy, shoot, shoot them all. We're not letting Shea get into, get to his spots in the mid range game. We're going to overcommit to him. Dort, I know you're shooting in a high clip, but if Lou Dort beats us, then Prove Lou it. Dort beats us. Yeah. Prove it. Prove it that you could do it down the stretch when it matters. Like it's one thing to do it, you know, uh, as your teams are going into the all star break, coming off the gas a little bit. It's another thing to do it in the playoffs whenever the pressure's on, you're on the road. Yeah, that's that's a good point. The last thing, I, I would have loved to see Mark Dagnall get the honor of being the all-star game coach, but I kind of love that he didn't get it. Chris Finch from Minnesota gets the nod. Dagnall seems like a guy that would just file that away, you know? Yeah. File that away and say, okay, okay, yeah, I'll I'll remember this. I don't know. He just... Seems like a really smart, intelligent guy. He, all these people say incredibly complimentary things about him. He may end up being coach of the year, but just a little chip on the shoulder for the head man for the Thunder. Don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. Yeah, I I think it would have been good for him, for some notoriety, for the Thunder, for some notoriety, in case people hadn't noticed what they're doing. But... You know, I'm sure being able to take a a little bit of a break isn't a bad thing for for everyone. So I don't know how mad about it he necessarily is. Yeah, that's a good point.